with this. You're going to see this in, in future testimony. But Azrael knows where everything is. When I say the tape, she knows who's who. She knows where the bank accounts are, where the money is. She knows who's who's using who. Not seen what we've been trying to show you that you've been brainwashed. But once she watched that documentary and she read the emails that I sent over to her, uh, that he was sending to Joycelyn, telling Joycelyn the same things that he told her. He's um, hiding other tapes for Azrael, just like uh, London on the Tracks mom was doing. Cheryl, I forgot her last name, Cheryl Mack or whatever. Um, and so I'm trying to tell you without telling you too much, because like I said, this is a federal case. And I've even helped out uh, the feds with all the information that I've been given. So I was working with the uh, department, was it the Department of State? Uh, Homeland Security, one of them damn please. Homeland Security, my lawyers were, uh, to hand them over everything uh, that we had received. Can I with you? What? ACP, do you see this? Look, if it ain't official Dana J, Levi for Kelly, Prima Donna News, I don't even want to see it. Just take the time. Look. You got some weed? Dang. Gotta get some. Alright, hurry up. These are them here, everybody here. We waiting on you. The truth gonna come out. It's gonna really fuck you up, bro. Because you think you're smarter than everybody. You thought you were smarter than the system. You went in there now and that woman put your truth out. I don't got nothing to do with that. You ain't even mad with me. You mad with your motherfucking self. Nobody told you to go do what you did. You did it, bro. I hate all this shit y'all try to say about you. You can say whatever you want about me. I'm sorry. You can say whatever you want. I don't give a fuck, bro. I'm dealing with real life situations. And YouTube is not a part of mine, bro. But when you come home and you want to keep making yourself like you was me, or you have a relationship better than me with my daughter, you stupid as fuck, bro. That's why when I call my daughter, my daughter acts like a, a daughter. Not a child, but a daughter. I don't get in the in-between. I don't play these games. I don't befriend people, kids, and, and, and do goofy shit like you did and then talk your way out of it. Like, bro, you was fucked up. <laughs> I did want to tell you, like, um, to switch the 90 days out, but when you do switch them out, I do have a lot of stuff to talk to you about, like, really good stuff. <laughs> what do you mean? I, we already talked about last week switching out the days. We've been talking about that, so why are you saying wow? Yeah, because you, you, you hung up on me and called right into the building, and they called me to pull down the floor, I mean, to the floor. Sorry for you. I am so sorry for you. 
Oh, it's bear. It's done. It's done, bear. You're, it's done. It's over. It's over. You may not even make it to trial. I'm so sorry for you. I'm sorry. I really did love you. And you, you lied to me, and you used me, and you played me. Yes, you did, bear. Yes, you did, bear. Bye. It's rather interesting how people attach themselves to these stories, whether they were advocating for these so-called accusers or advocating for R. Kelly. It just showed how simple-minded people are to run with hearsay instead of observing things for themselves and coming up with their own conclusions. The problem is other people begin to attach themselves with people who they deemed as the muscle or the voice when out their way to insert themselves in the midst of this federal investigation and took the focus off of the individuals that I've come out here trying to keep your focus on from day one. Those individuals who want to give life to all of these stories but pled the fifth in the first trial to avoid making it blatantly obvious what I've pointed out from day one. Now, it's no secret the level of corruption in Chicago. So when I personally witness this call on to these accusers, this backdoor dealings with these extortionists, and then this manufactured case, it should have been blatantly obvious what you have saw highlighted on my platform in which so many wanted to take the focus off of and be the muscle. So there you have it. But what we're not going to do is start making people believe that individuals are being targeted merely for supporting Robert Kelly when in actuality is you can support an individual without being involved in janky ass shit. Like what I'm about to expose you to that keeps all these characters in their feelings because unlike them, I don't run with gossip, but I will let them hang themselves. Who is bubbling then? So when you told me this, I'm like, I don't already talk to the twins. I don't already talk to the Shanti McGee husband. I don't already talk to Dunn Russell. I don't already talk to Linda Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> sex with uh, Bubba as well. No, we did not have a threesome, but me and Bubba had an, another relationship outside of Rob.
I've still yet to figure out how people watch the same things that I watch, and yet they weren't led down the same path that I was. In looking at a person like JP, who was used to facilitate this narrative, who actually was one of the main people who enlightened me to the fact that a lot of the things we saw put in these original motions and indictments against Robert Kelly detailed a line of extortion, and the fact that they're going to overlook McDavid's key roles and then try to put the blame on Robert Kelly in this RICO case in New York is what really flabbergasted me. So as I watch all this information be put on social media and then I start to put two and two together, it became clear to me why certain people were working so hard to push certain narratives and remove the accountability across the board for certain individuals. Today in the child pornography trial of singer R. Kelly, witness after witness identify those on that now infamous sex tape as the alleged victim and R. Kelly. Seal TV's Randy Bellasoma was in the courtroom today, joins us now from 26 in California with more. Randy. Sean, today for the first time we heard testimony that identified those on the tape from someone other than a relative, a friend, or a parent of a friend of the alleged victim. We heard from a former employee of R. Kelly who said at first she did not want to believe that it was him. Lindsay Perryman worked for Robert Kelly on and off from 1999 to 2006, doing everything from cleaning floors to handling the defendant's personal business. She told the court that included driving the alleged victim in the now infamous sex tape to and from his Olympia Fields home. She also testified to often seeing the girl at Kelly's recording studio, sometimes carrying a pillow and an overnight bag. The image that I saw looks exactly like Mr. Kelly, Perryman said, then IDing the female on the tape, citing her facial features and her cheekbones. During cross-examination, defense attorney Mark Martin inquired about Perryman's purported master's degree from a recording conservatory in Arizona, a degree she said took only months to acquire. I didn't go to Oxford or Harvard, no, Perryman replied. Also taking the stand was Jada Burnett, a family friend of the alleged victim. She said the female on the tape was about 12 or 13 at the time and noted her distinctive cheeks and facial structure. However, that's as far as she could go. Here's an exchange during cross-examination by defense attorney Sam Adam Jr. At some point, you'd have had to have seen her naked. You were so close, right? I've never seen her naked. 22-year-old Raven Gangler testified as well, saying the girl on the tape was her friend from junior high. She said that was something that was absolute, and said the alleged victim was very proud of her relationship with R. Kelly. Generation tape that, that was filled with all sorts of video noise where you couldn't identify, in my opinion, anybody. That's, 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 that's my view of the tape. Uh, there is, there's an idea out there that because he sat in that courtroom stoic and he didn't show emotion and he didn't uh, show uh, any kind of concern, and I, I heard that said about him, sitting next to him, because I did every day, if you recall, I sat next to him every day of this trial and listened to him and talked to him. He was a very caring and concerned person. He just knew that every move that he made was going to be criticized, every move that he made was going to be watched, every move that he made was going to certainly come out in a newspaper or on television, and so his way of dealing with it was to be stoic. R. Kelly, really? Really? Now I gave him R. Kelly's jail records. Ask him how he got R. Kelly's jail records. Ask him how I got the, e the emails between Azrael and R. Kelly. So you mean to tell me I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about? The article state that the other person was in trouble. It did not. It did not. And there's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. You think we don't know? And I'm not saying that they can't pull no shit. But what I'm saying is I'm talking about the article at hand. There was a reason why the article didn't say what it said. And for people to make all these assumptions and, and oh boy, to be a lawyer, you should know. If the fans got something, they ain't going to announce it. They already got it. And, and if they going to do something with it, they going to do something with it. They ain't going to be no reporter letting people know ahead of time what's going on. When you hear fan investigation.
investigation. Everybody know that. Guess what? You hear after they've made arrests, okay? You hear after that. Less than a year, 10 months later, around Thanksgiving, um, I got, I heard that there was this videotape on the streets showing Kelly having sexual relations with this uh, young woman of 14 or 15 years. We had heard that there had been a relationship and we had tried to do some reporting on this woman. We had talked to some of her relatives. We had talked to her family. No one wanted to talk to us. And then one day I'm at home. Uh, I worked at home because she can't sit around and play loud music in the Sun-Times offices any more than we can here at BEZ, which is why we're in these editing booth cubicles doing mm -hmm. this, right? Uh, I got a call that said, go to your mailbox, click. Uh, hung up, and, and there in the mailbox was a manila envelope with nothing on it and a videotape inside uh, that showed uh, Kelly having uh, sexual relations with an underage woman. Certainly appeared to be. Too late. They should have did this 30 years ago. When her mother found out and that her mother, he actually stayed at their home in Detroit, and her mother uh, actually was sexually attracted to him as well, and he said when Aaliyah would go to sleep, that he would uh this now this is what he said he said that he would go in the living room and him and her would do sexual acts on the couch while Leah was sleeping in the bedroom it's too late Now, clearly, I can give you snippets from each case that has been waged against Robert Kelly to remain adamant in my position that this whole case was manufactured and all these people coming on these platforms just took the focus off the obvious corruption that I feel is being laid out now in Chicago. So if some people are not comprehending how it looks as a whole, let me remind you, all these janky-ass people concoct this whole case and now it's falling apart we watch them get on these platforms beefing with one another exposing the whole case and now we see how individuals that claim to have been supporting R. Kelly only played both sides of the fence whether you want to admit it or not obviously a lot that went on these platforms did not benefit Robert Kelly from those who say they support him Duh. And just think, if these individuals had just went and did what they should have done, which is file their reports instead of trying to entice and coerce individuals online to follow their lead, maybe a lot of people would have really been fooled by all the bullshit they've dispersed throughout these platforms. With that said, it does no good for all this information to sit on these platforms when the prosecutors are going to pick and choose what they're going to use and wait and see if there will be a defense. How can I pay child support? How? If my ex-wife is destroying my name and I can't work, how can I work? How can I get paid? How can I take care of my kids? How? What is your financial situation, if you don't mind saying? <clears throat> Here's the deal. So many people have been stealing my money. People was connected to my account. I went into, I went by myself for the first time to uh, Bank of America. Didn't know what I was doing. Didn't know what the hell was going on. When? Never when, been when, when did you do that? First uh, time by yourself? About three weeks ago to a month. Three weeks ago was the first time you went to Bank of America Absolutely. by yourself? by myself because I was so tired of not knowing where my money was, where my publishing is. Isn't that on you then? Huh? Isn't that on you? A lot of it's on me. That you didn't know where your money is? Me. A lot of it's on me. And people say he doesn't but, have money because he had to pay so much in settlements. What do you say about that? Lie. He, he's already said, I, I know when I talked to Miss Bungie, we were together in Santa Monica, she said he's written some songs that he, saw, that he sang to her um, that he has accepted. 
Yeah, he's going to die there. He's accepted that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, Will there be an appeal? Oh, yes. Yeah, he's definitely filing an appeal. But do you know how long an appeal takes? You know, the mm-hmm. difference. Here's what happened. Here's what happened with Mr. Cosby. The reason why his appeal happened so quickly, he did two years and 10 months, but he had a voice speaking for him. Yes. Okay. Who kept his story alive. R. Kelly has never had a voice to keep yeah. his story alive, to tell his story. Every day, I was Mr. Cosby's only visitor. Every day, I visited, every, every time I visited him, I, I did a media interview. Talk about him when the prison was doing something egregious or duplicitous against him I, and against any other inmate. And I found out about it. Hey, I went straight to the media. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that that beat them at their game. I think I think just he had too many people. Wrong people. Wrong people who wanted to just get to know me. Okay, they wanted to get to me. They wanted to say that they were in, in my presence, unfortunately. For their own and, personal and, reasons. And, 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 and for their own personal gains. And I started, they started giving me calls about their own problems and things they wanted. And these are people who were supposed to have been fighting for him.